All right, class, I got a set up here. Not necessarily ideal. Hey guys, how's it going? Um, not the perfect ideal, but it's got it set up so you can see what this is all about. So I have my tile made with a drawing, a relief sculpture drawing on it. And I want to show you, you can't see perfectly well, but the edges on it go downward like this. So that you have the tile, I have in blue. The green line is the board that I have there. And then this says surface relief sculpture, which is upward, and then the back, which is going to be the back of the mold. If you want to see the main thing I'm trying to point out to you is that the edge has a line from the top where the surface sculpture is down. It's going like a trap, side of a trapezoid. So the top where you have your relief sculpting is this part is narrower than the base so that when you flip it when you cast it you're going to have it you're going to be pulling it out and see how the back is wider that means this whole surface will pull out of the mold now when i go to add the get my pen here when i go to add the rubber to it i'm going to need to put it over the whole thing do it in a different color You'll see that I'm going to be doing it over the whole thing and down and then onto the board a little bit. This is called the flange. The flange that you have right here. So you want it to be going over. What I'm using for the board is just straight up normal cardboard. I have my tile on there pretty nicely. When I did it, I sculpted it using random little tools I had. I have some clay tools. You could use forks, pins, any kind of thing. You don't have to worry about drop the spray loose. You don't have to worry about um, air bubbles and things like that and wedging the clay because you're not going to be firing it. This is just the model or the pattern you're going to be using to make the mold with. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, you do need to make sure any details you add to it are firmly attached. So you can score them and push them in, but you don't need to worry about air. Now today what I'm going to use as my spray release is just old fashioned, good old fashioned cooking spray, pan. You don't necessarily need it on the clay because that will pull out of the mold pretty easily. And it will be kind of destroyed in the process, but that's normal. What you do kind of need it on is the cardboard. If you don't have a spray pan, then just use a little cooking oil on, uh, dump it out on the cloth and then rub it a little on there. Or if you have WD-40 or something like that. Technically, the, uh, the Latex won't probably stick to the to this, but I don't want to like risk it because I don't want my work to go sideways on me. So I'm purposely just I'm just doing a little bit of it to you know keep it from getting ruined. You could probably get away with not putting release on there, but it's better safe than sorry. So I just put it around the edge a little bit. I forgot to grab a paper towel, so I'm just going to use a glove here. Just get it on there. This is just so my flange doesn't stick. If I wanted to, I could spray it over the surface. The reason why I spray would work better is because if I try to push oil on there, I'd mess up my drawing, so to speak, my image. So there's that. Let me go ahead and put both gloves on because I don't want to get stuff over my hands. You can use any type of gloves if you have them at home. If you don't, it's not toxic, the latex just don't, it's kind of messy. So as I told you when I saw you all, this is your latex. You want to shake it up. Shake, shake, shake. Shake it like a Polaroid picture. It should be pretty wet and creamy inside there. Like a sour cream or something. Now, the brush has the handle cut off of it so that 
You don't have to worry about it drying out. You just leave it in there afterwards to keep the handle clean. Um, because if you pull this out, use it, and then let it dry, it'll become like a solid paddle. If you're worried about the handle getting coated, you could put it inside a plastic bag and make sure it's sealed with a rubber band. But basically, this is latex. It's like kind of what's in a lot of paint, or partially in some paint. The first coat you do, I'm pushing it in. I'm just putting it in there and just kind of dabbing it. Get some on there. And it's going to be really important because it's called the Prince coat. It's like if you ever done mold making before, the first coat, the prints that you make off the impression, off the plate that you made. Well, this is the print coat. It's the one that you do first. And it's important to have it um, really covering the surface and getting into all the details. Because after this, every other layer is just going to be sitting on top of this. So if you have any bubbles, or details that you can get into, they won't they won't be showing in your mold because you didn't do enough to get it into the details enough. Now, I want to make a comment about my tile. I needed to make sure that I carved things out like a V and have area where space where the actual rubber can flow. And some of my tile has probably a little too much detail on it. Um, I did a drawing and worked through the design based on a series of products I've been doing about uh, structures that you see if you drive across the valley, like grain barns and different things and houses and barns. Um, they're interesting to me because of my childhood and, and experiences and places are marked by them even though you don't know exactly where the place is. So I did some print making prints of these um, and also paintings and things that I was going to, and sculptures too that I was going to show, but the gallery is closed right now. There's going to be the show coming up on campus. But I thought, oh, this is an interesting time. I can use this demo to make another form of this type of art. So the point I'm making, not all about me, is that do something for the design and the project that you're actually interested in. Don't you know, just do something random. If you're going to be spending the time doing this, you want to make sure you actually like it. So this is going to be cool because you're going to be able to have a bunch of something. If you do this right, you can make a lot of them. And these things will last quite a while. I'm going to give you enough plaster because it's too hard for you guys to carry big old plaster bags for probably doing the mold and then a couple castings. But you could cast a lot of things inside of a mold now, you couldn't cast hot metal into this because the latex wouldn't handle the heat. But, you know, there's a lot of castable materials. Concrete, wax, anything that goes from liquid to solid. Bronze, iron, aluminum, plastics are castable, all kinds of things. So, water is, if you freeze it, you can get ice sculpture. So, there's a lot of cool stuff. So, you can see that I'm applying it really um, pretty thinly and making sure... I'm really trying to make sure I get into all the detail. Kind of dabbing down with the brush. I'm not pushing too hard because otherwise I'll ruin the detail that I've been working to get in the carving and modeling of the um, of the sculpture, the relief sculpture. So you're going to want to be real careful, but you do need to make sure you get it into all the details. You do not want a thick giant glopping coat because it won't dry. The surface may dry, but the under part would never dry and then you won't get the detail of the mold. Now, I'm covering over the whole thing really well with that thin coat. Every layer is going to have to be thin otherwise it won't dry. It'll get bubbles of like wet, basically the equivalent of big wet paint bubbles underneath. So it's going to be a little bit tedious in that way to do this, but you just keep it to the side on a piece of cardboard. Every time you have a moment, you just kind of give it a coat, let it dry for a while. You can speed it up a little bit with the hair dryer, but you're going to have to take your time doing this because you want to build these coats up really solidly good. 
and make sure you do it right because it's going to be you know a long process. Now I got the whole surface coated. Now I'm going to want to start coating the edge. That's why I put all that uh, molder list down there was because I'm going to want to cover over the whole edge that's sloping downward because I want a little flange around this whole thing. That way later on when I put the plaster mother mold around it. I'm going to do all the rubber like the video and then do the plaster to hold the rubber into place because if you don't do hold the rubber into place you can't take you cannot take this relief tile out of this thing until you have the plaster around the rubber so you can once you get done with all these layers you don't take the tile out you wait until you have the plaster done because it'll just become like a balloon without shape if you took it out. So we're going to do all these layers. And then the plaster layer is going to be what holds the rubber in place, keeps its shape. And all the detail will be on the rubber part. And the strength is on the plaster part. It's called a mother mold. So it's like the mother mold is the plaster. This is the, the internal mold, the like bladder one. Or it's like a baby, like a mother holds a baby. That's kind idea if you remember it that way. Now I have this thing firmly attached down to the bottom so I don't have any weird undercuts. You need to watch that, see that video, watch lecture part one and see the video about undercuts. It's pretty easy for the clay to stick to the cardboard because I pressed it down really hard, carved on it. I carved it out on the cardboard so it's nicely attached, kept it wet until I did this, not like sopping wet, but not like letting it be dried out. So that gives me a nice even surface all the way around it on the edge. Okay, so I'm looking pretty good. I pushed it into all the spots really well. Um, I want to make sure that some of these spots have little holes. I'm going to go back there with a little extra. Make sure I'm dabbing in the hole all the way. I can see some of the uh, little holes where the clay is popping through, so I'm just going to dab in there and make sure I'm really coating, getting a good print coat into all those spots. So at a certain point here, I'm like, okay, I'm overworking, I'm starting to dry on my brush. So I don't want to keep this open forever because the thing will dry out. I want to clean the brush off on the edge a little bit so that I don't get, you know, up into the barrel of the brush. And then I'm going to drop it down in there. Well, it's going to be on the barrel anyway. Um, underneath the edge, let it pop down. You see, so it's still leaning upward, and then close my top really tightly so it doesn't dry out. And that's the first coat. Now I'm going to have to do this over and over again about 10 to 12 times to get this thing to work really well. At a certain point, there may be a section. That could have a problematic potential undercut in it. And what I would do is, while it's wet, put a real thin part down. Put this onto the tacky thing like that. And then I would take my brush and come back in and fill into the netting. To make sure it's firmly on there. I won't do this in the first two layers three layers, after the third layer, if I'm seeing something that looks like it'd be a problematic undercut, then I would do it. Oh, see the problem of what I just did? Messed up my layer. That's why you don't want it in the first one or two layers. Um, I just got some issues going on there because I pulled it up while it was tacky. So I'm going to go back and fix that after the video is paused. But that's what I would do. Um, to kind of get rid of undercuts maybe after the third layer and then I have five or six more layers over the top of it. I don't have to have the whole thing covered. I just put it into the spot I'm thinking it might be a problem. Undercut area. You don't have to do this. Some of you won't need to do this. It's just in case you do that's the burlap. So that's about that. I'm going to pause it. I'll see you in lecture number three.